Because there's a lot of clubs that help just their own friends. They forget about other people who live around us, you know? But we don't, we don't think like that. We like to help everybody. You know what? It was a dream that I've always wanted to be accomplished because I always uh, fantasized of becoming a leader of a great organization. But then I didn't realize that I, that I was the leader of a very uh, uh, gang that uh, caused a lot of destruction, a lot of hurt in people in the community. And as time went on, I started to see myself and say, wait, maybe we can channel all this negative energy into something very positive. We started to change our image from using our hands and hurting people to doing something constructive like fixing, uh, fixing people's cars, fixing people's apartments, painting people's apartments, helping people walking up the block. What's left of the old Ghetto Brother Club is still standing there. When I see that, I get shivers up my spine. Here's where all the major decisions were made during those violent years. We were the type of group that we were internationalized, okay? We believed that there was no boundary. The streets belonged to everybody. Now, the rules that the other gangs was, if you step in a certain community, you have to take off your colors. If you're walking with your colors, you're asking for war. You're not showing respect to this, uh, to this gang's uh, community. When Ghetto Brothers used to do that, we would actually take off our jackets, not to start any rumble. Um, before we even do that, I'll even talk to the president and let him know the relationship with the Ghetto Brothers doing the community. We were one of the only groups that they allow us to walk in their community with our colors on, because they knew we represent the peace. Cornell Benjamin, also known in the streets as Black Benji, was ambassador for the Ghetto Brothers. He was beaten to death when he tried to intervene between two other gangs. Instead of retaliating, the Ghetto Brothers convened a peace meeting of all the gangs in the South Bronx at the Boys Club on Ho Avenue. This event marked a turning point in the history of the gangs as they began to turn away from violence to become a positive force in the community. Black Benji was the third staff leader in the Ghetto Brothers. His job was to make peace with other clubs, bring in the presidents, the vice presidents, and the warlords to our division, let them know what the platform of the Ghetto Brothers is, what do we stand for, and what is our objectives. We started, we came down the stairs, right? And we stopped there. And there was about 13, you know, 13 to 20 of us. And then when we looked down, we seen them. That's when Benji came out, and Benji said, and he, he took a step forward and he said, listen, brother, I'm here, we're here to talk peace. And uh, the guy, he came out and he said, I don't know what he said, piece of shit. And he like, must have took a jump. It looked like he threw a kick, but he must have took a jump to grab a pipe. Black Benji, at that time, was getting beat up right in the very corner. We found out an hour later, after he was taken to the old Lincoln Hospital, that they killed him. Oh, there were three gangs involved. You had uh, 70 Mortals, Black Spades, and the Mongols. And as a result of, that, of his death, that's where all the gangs met at the boys' club. Cussing on the scene. Advise the Ghetto Brothers. Warlord of the Ghetto Brothers. Hey, I would like for the police to leave. Oh, we got, oh, we got nothing to say. I know when we came to your turf, man, when Black Benji died, man, that's when we came to your turf for static, man. I'm gonna tell you what's happening now, because all this shit is bullshit, man. You see, because like, wow, man, we didn't have no static with you people, man. All we did is ask you people for the colors, man, and you people didn't give us our colors back. When we have static, man, we settled out among ourselves, man, because like, wow, we got to live in this district. The whitey don't come down here, man, and live in the fucked up houses, man. The whitey don't come down here, man, and have all the fucked up fucking no heat in the fucking winter time, you understand? We do, Jack. So therefore, like, wow, we got to make it a better place to live. You understand? Newspaper people will walk up to, what are you guys gonna do? And here's how the media works, you know? And then he got members of my club and members of other gangs. Benji, what are you gonna do? Are we gonna take revenge on the death of Black Benji? I said, no, we're not. Would you believe that members are angry at me and some even threatened me? I said, to bring, to take revenge will make Benji's peace Oh no, it will mean nothing, we'll make it void. Even though we had colors, we were a gang, we'd never look for trouble, man. I could understand if they beat up Benji, but killing him is another thing. 
You took away one of our brother's lives, man. And we were right down at the funeral looking at them, saying, I wish the immortals, if they were them, to see what it is to take away one of our brother's lives. You don't want us to become a gang again, right? Because I know you, right? Don't I know you? You was up in the meeting and you told me, Benji, I want to get out alive. Didn't you tell me that? Benji didn't get out alive. Benji died. They took away my brother's life, man. The thing is, we're not a gang anymore. We're an organization. We want to help black and Puerto Ricans to live in a better environment. That's how a lot of gangs got together as a result of the death of, of a brother who went out to make peace and not war. Hey!